With me today is Chef Gabe Kennedy, the winner of season three of ABC's The Taste. He was deemed America's best undiscovered cook by the Taste celebrity chef mentors, Anthony Bourdain, Nigella Lawson, and Marcus Samuelson during the January 2015 season finale. He beat out 15 other chef contestants to win the title. He was also recently named executive chef for Bon Appetit magazine, and he's the ambassador for Concern Worldwide's Live Below the Poverty Line Challenge. Gabe is also a former intern for Aura TV, and he helped launch Larry King now during his time with us, which is the favorite time in your life, right? Definitely. Spent it here, a highlight. You, you dream of it every day. I do, as you know, it's my first uh, foray into media. <laughs> what, is, what is Concern Worldwide? Um, Concern is uh, an NGO um, really with a mission of uh, eliminating extreme poverty around the world by 2030. So I work with them in you know a variety of, of ways. But, we'll um, get into that later, but yeah, I mean, I'm it's, glad it's you're a good thing to be like, a part. How did you get to be on The Taste? It was funny. I was actually getting off of a plane from Romania. Um, yeah, I know, right? Kind of rede rediscovering Why? the roots. <laughs> Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was, you know, chasing flavor, right? I mean, I, I love to seek inspiration. Oh, you always want places. to be a chef. Yeah, I mean, food has been a really, really integral part of my life from day one, really. So um, you were coming back from Romania. Yeah, and I, and I got off the plane, and I had all these phone calls from a casting producer, and, you know, she would sort of been referred to me through a friend who runs a restaurant group, and it was just, it, was, it came at the perfect moment, and it was like, this is something that I have to do. And I took it really seriously, you know, and... Now, how does that show work for those who haven't seen it? So, um, it's, imagine like The Voice, but for cooking. So, you know, thousands of people apply, you kind of end up getting put onto teams, one with each of the, you know, celebrity chef mentors. Um, I was on Marcus Samuelson's team. And then there's an individual challenge, a team challenge, and two people get eliminated every show. And then, you know, you're left with the winner. Uh, and it's called the taste in that you only taste one individual thing? Yeah, so I mean, the, the whole idea is you're you taking... You don't need a meal. No, you, you, so everything goes on a spoon. Everything's tasted blind. Um, it's not blind, about who you are. Eyes are blindfolded? Not eyes are blindfolded, but they don't know who cooked which spoon. I see. And so it's, it's all about the taste. You know, you're condensing a, uh, a dish and you're putting it onto a spoon, tasting it blind, and um, there's some different themes. And uh, it was a really interesting exercise, especially for me, so much about what I love... You know, I love food because it can tell a story. And so it's interesting to remove myself from that and have to just, like, you're, you're, I'm giving you a spoon. Don't the mentors vote for their own guys? Well, it's blind, so they don't necessarily know. I think over the season, you sort of understand people's styles a little bit more. Um, but, you know, I don't know. There's some... There's is, some, some it, is, is a spoon a fair judge of a chef? I think it is. I mean, I think that, you know, it you have to be precise, right? It's, it's attention to detail. It's, it's a flake of salt. It's a drop of acid. It's a drop of lime or lemon or vinegar. You know, and, and when I'm approaching it, I want that bite to be really, really special, so. If it's a spoon, it couldn't be a steak, could it? It could be a steak, but it'd be a strip of steak. I cooked steak a few times on the show, so. You did? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you have to keep winning, right? You have to keep winning. Yeah, in you know the worst cooks go home. So as long as you're not in the bottom, but my goal was like, I wanna win. So I actually won, uh, I hold the record for all time like wins out of the three seasons. Did any mentor intimidate you? No one really intimidated me. It was an amazing experience. I mean, I had been mentored through those four individuals as a kid through the television or through books. And so it was really surreal to stand in front of them and be like, you know, holy shit, I'm here. Where do you, like, do, where do, you cooking do the for cooking? Um, it's a, you know, it's a studio in LA. And each it's of you got your own little place and go to work and you can, I mean. Yeah, it's like a big stadium. It's a stadium. And then you have your own little station and it's divided by You teams. have assistants helping you? No, all, all comes down to you. Do people recognize you now on the street? Every once in a while, I mean, it depends. There's, a, there's some foodie. Do you all live together, people. hang around together? Or you... We were in a hotel, so it wasn't like reality big brother kind of thing. I mean, I, st I stuck to myself. I, I was very like, you know, I still have good friends that I, that I speak to from the show, but it was very- In the finale, process. what did you cook and what did the other contestant cook? Man, I mean, the finale itself was actually seven different 
spoon. So it started with five people and it broke it down. But my my final, final dishes were uh, it's your perfect meal. So three spoons, appetizer, entree, dessert. My appetizer was a uh, Kunamoto oyster wrapped with a live sea scallop that I cured between some, some sheets of kombu, which is Japanese seaweed. And uh, it was on top of a pickled turnip. Uh, there was some, some caviar, some sorrel. All on uh, a spoon. All on a spoon. It was actually really beautiful. And then my, my uh, entree was a nice glazed piece of duck. I kind of candied the duck, um, put it over some pumpernickel puree, uh, a nice little mushroom salad. And then for dessert, I did a a Thai-style donut with a coconut cloud and some uh, Thai fruit. So, you know, they could dip it in and it was good. It, wor- it worked out well. I think that at the end of the day, for me, it's just putting putting my love into it. I think that's you why. wrote on your website, food is our most intimate inter- interaction with the environment and with each other. And you say, let your food turn you on. Yeah. <laughs> you encourage people to break the label. What is that? I, so, I think... You know, food is our most intimate interaction, right? It's something that we touch three times a day, if not more. Um, You know, as a chef, I feel this responsibility as the last person to touch this, these beautiful things the earth gave us and give them to someone, a really a responsibility in that and to tell the story. And so I think that every ingredient has a story. And I want to tell those stories because I think that more and more people are becoming a little bit disconnected to where their food comes from. As far as breaking the label, you know, and, and so I want to encourage people to get into the kitchen, take the anxiety out of it, you know, experiment, touch it, taste it, you know, play with your food, wash the dirt off the vegetables, have a relationship with it, and don't eat it if it's not getting you excited, right? I mean, that's what I mean by don't let your food turn you on. If it's not getting you excited, don't eat it, right? Don't put it in your mouth. So you won $100,000. Um, yeah, winning. you yeah. also you also developing a new web series on abc.com. I am. Uh, yeah, a chef series. Uh, yeah, it's going to be you know me sort of running people through um, the, some basic cooking techniques that will really open up your world. I think cooking is like a very formulaic thing. If you can learn the technique, you can plug and play. I'm the opposite. I don't like the kitchen. I don't like to cook. We're going to get you in there. Yeah, uh, peanut butter and jelly maybe. That's right. That's, I don't, I don't like. I don't like. I don't. I, I don't experiment a lot. You know, like my wife, she will cook anything and eat anything. Like last night, we were at a house. It was a wonderful looking dinner, but it was fish that melted in your mouth. I don't, you like, don't like fish that know, melts in your mouth. I remember you don't like seafood. I don't like seafood. I don't. I don't. There's certain things. I just, how do I acquire it? Can you acquire? Like for example, I can't acquire a taste for risotto. Risotto is I, tasteless to me. I feel you on that. Maybe. I'll, I'll, yeah, I, I'm not crazy about risotto. I'm not crazy about risotto. It's a very specific kind technique. of bland. Yeah, you know, I mean, great risotto is magical, but I think yeah. it's very rare to find great risotto. Okay, you're gonna do a taste for me. Here are some of the rules. I hate eggs. I'm not wild about seafood. I like my meat well done. I'm very Jewish. And I'm gonna close my eyes and pretend I'm eating your creation. So what do I, what do, I do? All right, let me think about it. Um, all right, so we're, I think we're gonna we're gonna take it back to Brooklyn. So I think the bottom, right? It's in a spoon. We have this beautiful piece of rye bread, toasted, yes. toasted, lots of butter. You know, maybe some herbs in there. So crunchy, soft Don't in the middle. Don't go crazy with the herbs, but okay. No, it's just a little. A little all right, aromatic. okay. Don't worry about so it. So far, you got me with. Dude, the we rye. got okay. We got to- nice crunchy rye bread on a spoon. On a spoon. So we got the rye bread. Nice s- few slices of, of pastrami. But we're not talking any pastrami. We're taking the deckel, which is kind of the more fatty part of the pastrami. Sear it off. It's called heart attack heaven. Yeah, which we're getting, you know, right. beautiful. Some, some spicy, grainy mustard on there. Maybe some pickled onions. That's a and deli that's dish. It. And that's it. Oh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to take you to Katz's Deli. You win. But, but Gabe's Deli. You win. You win. You win season 10, 11, and 12. I'm, I'm doing it for you. Now, would you have done that on the chef show? I would have, if, yeah. if the challenge was there. I mean, I think that there's something, look, food needs to be relatable, right? So not only is food about, it's not making something pretty, it's not making something too refined, it's about creating something that resonates with someone's heart. I would eat a lot of spoons of that. You know what I mean? It's like, that's why food is special. It's our personal expression, it's our personal experience. Everyone has their own, you know, their own loves and dis- likes and dislikes. And it's being able to uh, create something that, you know, people enjoy and having some pleasure around the table. Not only about the food, right? Who you're sitting across from. 
Yeah. So this is pretty crazy because I'm sitting across from you. I mean, I never would. You just that. back from Haiti as part of that charity work you do, yeah. Concerned Worldwide. What do they do? So, um, you know, particularly in Haiti, I, I, I love Concern because, um, look, you know, the world is a complex place, and Concern really addresses the complexities and builds in, you know, a holistic approach. It's not saying we're going to build this everywhere, right? It's what does the community need? So I was working in, in Haiti with um, you know, some mango and avocado farmers where Concern had helped bring access to markets um, to bring them out of poverty. Uh, we sponsor uh, 12 women in uh, the Grand Ravine, which is you know, sort of the most notorious uh, slum in Port-au-Prince to go to a culinary school. So I worked with them and taught them some dishes and they taught me some dishes. Um, you know, sort of building in the idea that food could be a catalyst for change in their lives. Um, I did the same thing with a hospitality uh, group of hospitality students up in uh, Soda, which has this beautiful waterfall. Boy. So it was, yeah, I mean, it was a lot about, um, I get excited because I cook from such a place of privilege. I mean, I've been really fortunate and I work at a magazine where we buy whatever we want, we take a photo, we throw it out, and there's people there, one, one and a half, 1.2 billion people in the world who are, you know, food is a struggle every day, and they're having to decide if they're gonna yes. give. I get you get great rewards out of that. For it, yourself, ma it makes me rewards. feel good. You know, I mean, it, it, yeah, it makes me feel good. At Bon Appetit, they buy food and you judge them and you write about them. No, so I'll help do recipe development, do a lot of uh, events, uh, you know, in in house and out of house events, and then um, some video stuff for them as well. So it's fun. It's it, you know, I just started. It's. Uh, you know, I'm the visiting executive chef, so. When you were a kid, who was your chef hero? Anthony Bourdain. And that's why it was amazing to be on that show. I was like cooking for him and I, you know, I won his show. And yeah, the world is magical ways of working. We mentioned in the open that you started in the biz, so to speak, with us three years ago. You interned with Aura TV with Larry King now in our premiere season. Yeah. What are your memories of that? Oh, it was great. I loved it. It was, it, it's incredible to see Cornell how it all. And you were here, right? Yeah, I was at the Cornell Hotel School, and um, you know, media was always something interesting, and you were you know, just launching, so I wanted to help be a part of that. Obviously, you're a legend, so. <laughs> we had some fun with you at uh, City Field in New York. Justin Turner was with the Mets then. He's now the premier reserve infielder for the Dodgers, hit 300 last year. Yeah. He's become a star in Los Angeles. And we had some fun as we show a picture of you, and we asked about, you know, pies being thrown in the face of players when they hit a game-winning hit. Yeah, he was he's notorious well, for throwing the pies, right? That's right, he's a notorious. So let's watch a clip. Now what's the secret? Well, the secret is a nice, usually in there, it's a nice big warm towel and a can of Ready Whip. Now, the first walk-off we had of the year this year, we actually didn't have any whipped cream. And I had to use shaving cream, and I got, uh, I got abused burns, for right? it. Yeah, it burns the eyes, it's no good. So you just take the towel and Start spreading it on and get it on there nice and thick. You want to make sure you get his whole face covered in whipped cream so it makes it tougher to finish the interview. Everyone knows they're going to get it when they get the walk off. So And they know uh, it's you, right? Yeah, yeah, every time. So <laughs> I go up there and some of them try to avoid it and some of them just take it and, uh, you know, you put it in their face and rub it in there nice and good, get in their ear a little bit, sometimes up in their nose. and. Uh, <laughs> Make it tough on them to finish that interview. So and nothing like baseball, man. Thank Absolutely you, not. Thank, Thank you, man. You. Thanks for having me. Anyone? 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 After a little trepidation, our amazing intern Gabe decided to take one for the team. Oh, the Gabe's had an incredible. Oh. oh. <laughs> There's good. There's yeah. good. Yeah, it wasn't what was bad. that like? It was great, you know. Ready Whip is good. Yeah, it was good. I mean, I like my own whipped cream a little bit more, but you know, <laughs> the uh, to take a pie, I took a pie in the face for you. You know, I mean, what, what can I say? Yeah, hey, you or take one for the team. Take one for the team. So, what's next for you? Restaurant, cookbook. What are you? What's your goal? Yeah, so you know, I have uh, got a cookbook in the works. Um, obviously, that's a process. Uh, restaurant. Uh, really excited about this concept. I can't say too much about it, but it is uh, the flavors that I crave every day. Um, and I, I think you'll probably like it as well. Um, and, you know, continuing to, to do what I love, which is, you know, try to make an impact through food. So I congratulate you, Gabe. Thank you. It was great having you as an intern. No matter where you excel in life, you will always print the name Larry King now on the resume. I'll do that. A big thanks to <laughs> Chef Gabe Kennedy. I knew him when. 
And we wish you nothing but success, Gabe. Nothing. I really, I love you very much. You'll soon be able to watch Chef Gabe on avc.com. For information on that and for more on his other work, including his newest recipes, go to his website, gabekennedy.com, and check him out on Twitter, uh, at Gabe Kennedy. And, as always, you can find me on Twitter, at King's Things. I love hearing from you. See you next time. Thank you.